All right, so let's go and get into this. So ladies and gentlemen, all I'm simply going to do is follow my process that I wrote down. So the process goes as follows. First thing you need to do is rewrite this to slope intercept form. I drew a coordinate axis, and I didn't leave myself room. That sometimes happens. So I'll just do the work over here. Okay. So to write it in slope intercept form, we want to have the y isolated. y equals mx plus b. Well, we have an inequality instead of an equal sign, but it's the same process goes solve for y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo adding 3x by subtracting a 3x. I have now negative 2y is greater than negative 3x plus 12. Does everybody follow me with what I did? Is everybody OK? OK. Yeah. Now you see my variable y is being multiplied by negative 2. So to undo multiplying by negative 2, I divide by negative 2. Now remember, exactly as you just said, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to make sure you flip the inequality. Then also remember that when you're dividing a quantity by a number, you have to divide both of the terms by that number. So therefore, negative 3 over negative 2 is a positive 3 halves x. And 12 divided by negative 2 is a negative 6. Do you guys see how this is now in slope-intercept form? It's not equals, but it's in slope-intercept form. So now we can identify the slope and the y-intercept. I do not like saying m equals 3 halves, b equals negative 6. Yes, that is correct, but how does that really help you, right? Write the, write the slope as a fraction and write the y-intercept as a point. So I will say the slope is 3 halves. And the y-intercept is the coordinate point 0, comma, negative 6. The y-intercept is always 0, comma, whatever b is. Okay. So why is that helpful? Because now, when you guys are getting to this, you can plot the y-intercept, which is negative 0, comma, negative 6, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Nice big top. Then we can use the slope to find the next point. So from my y-intercept, I can rise 3, go over 2 in the positive direction. 1, 2, 3, over 2. I could also do negative 3 over negative 2. Would you guys agree with me that negative divided by negative is the same as a positive? So you could also go negative 3, 1, 2, 3 to the left 2. But it's not really necessary, um, at least in this example. So um, now we're going to connect our graphs. But remember, we're graphing inequalities, not equations. So to my previous point, inequalities, and here's the relationship I want you to see. We talked, and when we did one variable inequalities, when it was less than or greater than, um, less than or greater than, our solution point was an open circle, right? Does anybody remember what we said? Why was it? Yeah? Because it's not included in the solution. Not included. Now we're graphing a line that is not included. So we don't have, so that means all the points are technically little open dots, right? All the points that make up a line. Well, it kind of seems confusing. So what we do, instead of to graph a line that's not included, we used a dashed line. So the inequality tells us the same thing. Remember, two variables just tells us to do x and y axis. And then if it's open or not included, less than or greater than, then we're going to use the dashed. Does that make sense? Does that kind of answer your question? All right, cool. So now the next thing is all the points that are on the line are not included to our solution. So then what is the solution? So to do that, what we're going to do is test our solution. So to test our solution, we're going to choose a test point. And the best test point ever created, ever, was 0, comma 0. And the reason why is just the math is very easy. You could choose any point you want to as long as the point is not on the line. Because if the point's on the line, you're going to test the line. And we don't want to test line. We want to test points that are either above or below. So to test your point, all you do is write test 0, 0. And that's a coordinate point. And you're just going to plug in 0 in for x and 0 in for y. Okay. So 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0 is just going to be 0 is greater than 12. So ladies and gentlemen, is 0 greater than 12? No. So the little tip for you guys, if one point is false above the line, all points above the line are false. So if you guys would have chosen any point above here, 
It always would have made a false statement. So if it's false, that means all the points below are true. So we're just going to draw some lines to represent those true solutions. Okay. Please be careful. I'm going to give you guys a little tip, but I don't want you to be confused. When you have your equation in slope-intercept form, where the y is solved, you can also look at the inequality symbol. The less than is going to tell you to shade below. But where do students get confused? They don't solve it for y, and they just look at the original equation, and they see a greater than symbol, and then they shade above. Does, do you guys see that? So. Yes, test points are helpful. If you check your work, make sure that you did it correctly. But you can also kind of, not cheat, but kind of take a shortcut here. But that only works when y is on the left-hand side and isolated. OK? All right. So I'll do one more, or maybe, actually, I'll do two more. We got time. Well, you guys get out 50, right? <laughs> 